What does Joe Biden believe? We still don't really know on a number of fronts. As a candidate, he was never really pressed during the campaign, and now the media is basically only asking versions of this. What do you see as the biggest threat to your transition right now, given President Trump's unprecedented attempt to obstruct and delay a smooth transfer of power? It doesn't appear that the president is going to come around anytime soon and admit defeat. So what are you going to do? Journalist Mark Halpern writes today that Biden's advisors for years and in 2020 clearly fuzzed things up, as he says. He says Biden doesn't want to rub the labor unions the wrong way on trade and that the president-elect has mixed views on some issues and no views on some issues. He concludes that we really have no idea how he will handle our relationships and that we don't know where he stands on dealing with these two, although President Obama is now speaking out a bit on the issue of China. Republican Senator Dan Sullivan of Alaska joins me now. Senator, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you Great very much, Great to be much, back Chair. on the show, Martha. Uh, good to have you, Chair of the Senate Armed Services um, Committee. So basically... Um, President Obama came out and said, you know, if if I had to do it again, I would be a lot tougher on China with trade issues. And he kind of echoed a lot of what we saw from President Trump. Are you concerned about how a Biden administration will approach China? Absolutely, I'm concerned. And I think what you your uh, piece teeing off this segment about what Mark Halpern said about we don't really know what um, uh, Vice President Biden stands for, I think it's a really important point. The media didn't press him, but here's one issue that relates to China that I'm very concerned about. Second term of the Obama-Biden administration, they recklessly cut defense spending by 25 percent. Now, we have worked really closely with President Trump to rebuild that readiness, to rebuild our military. But what I'm really concerned about, Martha, is they're going to do it again. Look at Carter, Clinton, Obama. Um, they have a tendency to want to cut our defense spending. I debated Bernie Sanders and Chuck Schumer about uh, two months ago on the Senate floor on a Sanders amendment to, quote, defund the military. No kidding. That's what they called it. Fortunately, we defeated it. But that's a huge issue. And it's one of the big reasons why this George, these Georgia Senate races are so important. The Senate can be a check on this desire to once again cut our military, which I fear uh, um, a uh, President Biden would do. I, I want to ask you about something that, that just came through. It has to do with cybersecurity. Uh, the president has just fired Chris Krebs, who was the cyber chief. Uh, he wanted the DHS chair, uh, the DHS had Chad Wolf to fire Chris Krebs, um, and now the president has done so by tweet. Do we have the, the president's tweet in there, guys? There we go. Uh, the recent statement by Chris Krebs on the security of the 2020 election was highly inaccurate and in that it was massive improprieties and fraud, including dead people voting, poll watchers not allowed in polling locations, glitchings in the voting machines uh, were not changed, oh, changed votes from Trump to Biden, late voting and many more. Therefore, effective immediately, Chris Krebs has been terminated as director of the Cybersecurity Cyber and Infrastructure Security Agency. Chris Krebs came out after the election and said that they felt that there was no meddling uh, and no issue with the election. Your, your response to that, sir? Well, look, my, I'm just learning about that, yeah. so thanks for the thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this, and this is, again, a difference from what happened in 2016, in 2020, when you talk about foreign interference, foreign interference, whether Russia, Iran, that clearly happened in 2016. What our agencies did, and this is our military, National Security Agency, um, they worked hard to make sure we were on offense, not on defense like we were in 2016. And I think the president and his team can claim a lot of credit. The Senate and the Congress put a lot of money, a lot of appropriations behind that from a security perspective. So from the perspective of foreign meddling, mm -hmm. we've learned a lot. And, you know, I think the president and his team should take credit for the fact that we did not see that level of foreign meddling yeah. from our adversaries that we've seen in previous elections. And I think every American should be proud of that and take comfort in that. Um, I, I want to ask you about this incident that happened with the mask on the Senate floor. Um, here's the full soundbite between you and Senator Brown from Ohio. Uh, he wasn't too happy. Watch this. Senator from Ohio. I'd start by asking the presiding officer to please wear a mask as he speaks, and people below him are, I can't tell you what to do, but I know that the behavior... I don't wear a mask when I'm speaking, like most senators. Well, I most senators... So I'll, 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 
I don't need your instruction from. I anyone. know you don't need my instruction, but I, there clearly isn't much interest in this body in public health. What was going on there? Was there more to that than what we see? Yeah, there's a lot more to that. Look, uh, we take the issue of the virus in the Senate very, very seriously. Everybody wears masks. As I mentioned, you know, the only time I don't wear a mask is when I'm speaking. When I preside, like I was last night, I was wearing a mask. And when I was making statements, I took my mask off. Then I put it back on. That's the same way we uh, proceed with hearings. And so Senator Brown knows that. You know, what's going on here is really two things. First, you know, some of these far left senators like Senator Brown just can't help themselves on their desire to want to lecture people on these kind of issues, whether it's lecturing other U.S. senators or lecturing working families. And I think it's a put off. People recognize the challenges. We're going to get through these challenges. But to be lectured or preached to gotcha. by uh, senior officials is uh, something well, that I think is not not uh, I, I certainly didn't appreciate. But here's a bigger issue. Um, Martha, if you listen to the rest of Senator Brown's speech, he was essentially saying, hey, we shouldn't be here. Right. We shouldn't be working. We should be hunkered down. And I just couldn't disagree more with him. We've been confirming judges this week. We're working on the Defense Authorization Act this week. The Senate should be showing the rest of the country that, yes, we can work through the pandemic safely yeah. and we can he, still get the work of the country done. He doesn't want to do that. He, 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 wants he didn't to be want to push down. those judges through. That was pretty clear um, in what his comment was. Um, but, you know, obviously our thoughts are with Senator Grassley, who yes. is 87 years old and has just tested positive for COVID. And he was speaking on the floor on Monday. Um, I, we're concerned about him, obviously. Are others concerned uh, who were near him? Well, look, I think, like I said, what we try to do in the Senate is everybody wears masks. We're taking the social distancing issues very seriously. But we also recognize that we need to work, that the country needs the, leg the legislature mm -hmm. acting on behalf of our nation. And, you know, we're all praying for Senator Grassley. Sure you may are. have seen our, our congressman, the lone congressman from Alaska, Congressman Don Young, also uh, caught the virus. He's out of the hospital now. So we're praying for all of them. But we also need to make sure that we can still do the business of the Senate responsibly. Okay. That is what we're doing. We have a lot of work to do, and that's why we can do both. And I think that's an important example for the rest of the country. Senator, thank you.